Bedford Post, one, clear. No prisoners. Sentry, post to the rear of the line. The bastion is a protective gun room at the point of the Pentagon, which enables us to engage our enemy, this is the defensive battery, by firing cannons down along the walls. Let's have a look at our supplies here, show you what the men get. Tell you what opportunities I have for men here. This is our quartermaster building, quartermaster issue room. On the tables here is what a soldier gets issued to. Every soldier in the army gets a set of uniforms to provide them with for a year, and at the end of that year, we reissue again. So if you sign up here, gentlemen, well, first let's see what we've got. Does any man here have a skill? <laughs> well, don't worry, I'll find one for you. I've got stable shoveler, wheelbarrow pusher, cement mixer, and cannonball catcher. <laughs> no, we haven't had anybody come back with it yet, but it's always the first time. called a glacius, an earthen embankment that rings us and brings the elevation up and then drops the elevation back down again, right against the wall. In front of the walls of the fort is what we call a dry moat or wet ditch. Uh, doesn't hold water, only a little bit of rainwater, but it dries out pretty quick. The reason we don't need a moat around the fort is because we're on an island. So you've got yourself a ditch all the way around. And what it does, it's a protective ditch in the sense that it protects the wall with the mound in front of it, but it also forces our enemy when they charge upon the fort that they have to rise the embankment. And when they rise the embankment, they're in line with all the rifle ports along the wall. When they go down into the ditch, they just made a very big mistake. The ditches are swept with cannon fire from the bastions that fire down through the ditch. The survivors down there, realizing that this was not a very good move, <laughs> think that they'd want to leave. And as they rise the mound again, to the top and crest it, they're in line with the rifle ports again. Not only that, you can't stand against the wall like this fella is, and the rifle ports are up here above you. The rifle port bases of the rifle ports are at an angle, sloping down. So what we do is we light grenades and roll them out through, which we drop right amongst us, which is not a very good thing. So yes, unfortunately, we're built for war, and that's what our job is here, to protect this waterway and to prevent an invasion here. Company, left face. March. The forts were built because of the War of 1812. President Washington had urged the government to appropriate money to build fortifications, but the young government didn't have the money. And again, we went to war with the British, and President Madison and Dolly Madison, his wife, they got chased out of the White House, and the British burned the White House, they did. And after that, in 1816, the government said, that's it. We're gonna appropriate the money to start building fortifications to protect our deep water ports. Because the British were kept at bay at Baltimore. They couldn't get into Baltimore Harbor because of Fort McHenry. And we know what took place at Fort McHenry, right? That's right, old Francis Scott Key, they're right writing down things, there you are. So that's right. So the forts proved themselves then. Even though George Washington, being the, the man that he was, great intellectual, he had urged the government to make it happen, they just couldn't. So forts start building through the 1820s and 30s and 40s. Fort Clinch starts here in 1847. But it's a system of defense that goes from Maine all the way to Texas, where all the deep water ports are, that's a fort. Fire! This fort served in um, a total of three wars, uh, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, and of course, World War II. The army uh, occupied the fort during the war with Spain here and uh, stayed here for about two years. And then during World War II, from 1942 to 45, the army was here as well. He used it as a Coast Guard station and headquarters for the beach patrols and keep an eye on U-boat activities in this area, which uh, Operation Drumbeat was the Germans' uh, submarine fleets operating down the coast here, sinking ships, merchant ships mostly. And so they operated a station here at Fort Clinch during the war. So yes. Any other questions? 
Well, I guess all I'd like to do is let you walk around the fort. They're going to get your uh, lunch there. So there you go. You're welcome to do that. If you have any questions, I'll be around.